Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today we're going to cover one that's been requested a few times recently, which is the Denison Smocks for the British Paras. These are pretty cool, to be perfectly honest. I've done camo a couple of times before, but never something in quite this method, so hopefully you'll find something interesting here. Now, as a quick note, I have opted to give him brown trousers rather than the sort of uh, British battle dress green using English uniform from Vallejo. Uh, reason being is the green tone of the jacket I think works better with the brown. All right, so it might be a little ahistorical there, but you might like the look of it. And I know plenty of folks do paint their British just straight brown as far as battle dress goes. But without any further mucking around on that front, let's get a look what you're going to need and all of the paints will be listed in the description below. Now to start off with I sprayed this fella with some uniform grey and then I've given him a couple of thin coats of Citadel Zandri dust over the top of that. Uh, to be honest I would recommend for British battle dress and all that sort of thing Zandri dust is 100% the easiest choice to start from uh, particularly with these lighter denison jackets we're going to be doing. Now I did actually already paint <laughs> one of these guys and there he is I think he looks pretty cool but unfortunately my phone ate the video so we're starting over I am determined to get this to you okay so there's there's what the finished job is going to look like isn't that cool anyway <laughs> from our uh, Zandri dust there are three colors we're going to use for the jacket and we're going to start off with Middlestone this is a lovely color it's not quite gray it's not quite green it's definitely not brown it's Middlestone. Uh, if you are painting with Citadel paints, the only downside with this one is there isn't really a straight alternative. Something like Ogren Camo is very close, but that's a little bit brighter. Uh, if you are looking at doing a whole army of these guys, I'd recommend pick up yourself some Middlestone. If you want to do the more beige finish, then something like German Camo Beige for this first coat, or Rackarth Flesh might be an alternative. But we're going to do it the green way. Now, as always, we're adding just a little bit of water to the mix to help the uh, paint flow off the brush. And then we're just going to go over all of the jacket. Don't be too worried if you hit skin or anything like that along the way. Um, the beautiful thing about, what's it called? Middlestone. Now, don't quote me on this. Don't tell anybody I said this. But it will cover Zandri dust in one coat. <laughs> so, I'm going to go around now. Let's have a look at that jacket once we've got that on. Now once that's had time to dry, I'm going to swap on down to a smaller brush, looking like a medium layer brush if you're using Citadel or just a one size brush from another manufacturer. And I've got, this is US Dark Green. What we're going to do is to sort of simulate the paint, not paint, sorry, the camouflage effect, we're just going to draw some triangles and not be particularly careful about it either. Like if you end up with trapezoids or what have you, don't worry about it. What we're doing here is just blocking in some of the colors. You can go to the edges of sleeves, uh, down the bottom here, you know, just block in these little random shapes. Uh, triangles are just the easiest way to start getting that in. Once you've got the areas blocked in that you want to be uh, these different camo colors, then you can go back and add little flicky bits and what have you. Now with the Denison smocks, uh, particularly along joins of sleeves and what have you, these tended not to be the same piece of material, so try not to cross sleeve lines with your camo pad, if you see what I mean. So I'm going to go around now and let's just blotch on some bits of green. Now once you've gone around the jacket a couple of times, you'll see some of these, you know, triangles originally have stretched out, elongated, don't be afraid to go up and sort of imply that you're going under areas of equipment. What we're going to do now is exactly the same thing again, but with uh, mahogany brown. Now this, we're just going to follow the same method. We're going to start by just doing some little random-y triangles and then flick a bit away so you get this random shape. You want to try and get the uh, camo pattern to sort of overlap other colors. So for example, on a sleeve here, I'm going to go and put a little bit here. Oh, that's not a triangle anymore. <laughs> so cruise around the whole model and just do the same thing again. Anywhere that you might have gone a little overboard with the green, you can get into it now with some of this brown and make it look a little more random and ragged again. 
Now after a couple of passes, this is what we've got for the jacket. And you'll see at the moment, it doesn't look particularly inspiring. <laughs> particularly around areas where there are details like belts, uh, the rope across his chest, all that sort of thing. It looks really ragged and messy. But obviously when we fill in those other details, that's going to look much tidier. So what I'm going to do now is exactly that. And I'm going to skip over this a little bit because I have covered British battle dress and all that before. So because these guys were, you know, late war, their equipment's going to be green. So I'm going to use green gray for that, just as a quick note. But we'll come back in a couple of seconds and have a look once all of those colors are on. So what does all of the base coats look like? Now, just quickly while I'm going through these, Vallejo has a lovely color called red. <laughs> it's simply red. And uh, it's got a slight sort of burgundy finish to it. So it's actually really ideal for these berets. Uh, again, if you are using Citadel colors, you could stick to something like corn red, for example. That'll give you a nice finish. But just, and I can't believe it's, its name is literally red. And it's fantastic. So just a quick coat of that while we're doing all these other colors. Now, with all of those base coats applied, it's time to shade them. And for once, I'm not going to tell you to absolutely bucket Agrax Earthshade over everything. <laughs> we are still going to use Agrax Earthshade, and it is going to go over the whole miniature, but slightly more sedate than we might do normally. All you want to make sure is that it's getting into the recesses, because this is going to bring down the colors a little bit and introduce our shading too. But you don't want to go crazy with it. So you see, I'm being quite careful really just anywhere it starts to pull on any flat areas drag it away straight away but let's come back here when i've got all of this on and then we'll give it about 30 minutes to dry now once it's had some time to dry we're on to a winner you can see it looks much better <laughs> the shading and those colors being brought down a little bit really does help the overall look so quite pleased with that so far what I would do from here if I was looking to get these guys on the table as quickly as possible would be to just highlight his skin and call it a day, do his base and, and get on with it. But we can go a little bit further. We'll, we'll do some extra. So what I've got here is, haha, the original three colors. So I've got my middle stone, my US dark green, and my mahogany brown. So I always struggle with that one for some reason. <laughs> And then roughly equal amounts of Iraqi sand. Now this works really well as a, a mix-in highlight for pretty much anything that is natural, particularly clothing. Obviously, if you're doing something brighter than this, you know, you've got desert uniforms, maybe go for a white. But <laughs> in this case, it's going to sort us out just fine. So all I'm going to do is mix in, like I said, roughly equal amounts. You see, it's quite a nice, quite a nice color. Probably need a little bit of water there just to make sure that's going to flow. And then we can get on to highlighting the jacket like we normally would. So I'm still using just my medium layer brush here. And all I'm going to do is just pick out a few areas that I would normally want to highlight. So edges of jacket uh, on its collar here, for example. Let's think about how you would normally edge highlight this stuff. So for example, here on his sleeve, all these little bits, we'll just get in there and do a bit of highlighting. So there's our middle stone highlighted. We'll now move on to exactly the same thing with the US dark green. And again, you want to just head to areas that you would naturally highlight anyway. So on the corner of his pocket here, I'm going to get the green highlight to the edge where the green is. And I've already highlighted in the middle stone mix. See, so we want to try and follow a natural highlight as much as possible. So up here on a sleeve, for example, let's do that. And let's cruise around now, and we'll do it for all of the green areas too. And then finally, onto our mahogany brown using the same method. Now this is probably the most time-consuming technique I'm ever going to show you, <laughs> but it will look the absolute business once it's done. So as always, trying to follow natural highlight points you ordinarily would. And you'll find it, it does sort of introduce a little bit more shape to these raggedy camo patterns that we did in the first place. So use this as an opportunity to sort of tidy up, if you want to, any of the edges of these uh, camo blotches. And you'll get a really good looking effect. 
Now from here, all that remains is to highlight the other parts of the skin, his trousers and so forth. And like I've said, I've done that before. So I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. Let's have a look once all of those highlights are done properly. Now when it comes to highlighting the beret, you can mix a little bit of Iraqi sand into that red that we used. But I do recommend just pick up a little Wazdaka red from Citadel. This stuff is the business. Just the right colour. It's got a nice natural sort of muted red finish to it. And that's going to sort us out just fine around the edge of the beret here. And then to finish off his cap badge, just a little bit of off-white. This is way easier to do when you don't have a camera in front of you. And then finally, the painting side of things is done. Now, like I said, this is quite time consuming. You want to be careful with it. You'll get the best results if you do spend the time highlighting everything. And it can look intimidating, but my tip for brush control when you're doing these highlights, once you've mixed up your color, rinse your brush off entirely, make sure it's not wet, and then just dip back a little bit on your brush at a time into the paint, all right? The big problem I see with a lot of folks trying to get these highlights and then things going all over the model. <laughs> Have less paint on your brush, guys, and make sure you can keep a tip on the brush. That's really the important things there. So I'm pretty pleased with how that's turned out. What I'm going to do now is go ahead and jam his base on him. Let's see what he looks like when he's ready to join the lads. And with those last couple of details finished, we are ready. Drop him on the table and give Jerry a jolly good snotting. Now you might notice the fellow I painted earlier here has a slightly different and brighter green. Now that I've used retractive green instead of uh, US dark green. If you like the more green finish, that's pretty easy to achieve. All the other steps are exactly the same, including all the highlight stages and what have you. I think ultimately I like this slightly darker finish a little bit more, but there you go. For the sake of uh, comparison, you might like that one, retractive green instead. So hopefully, guys, something there was interesting to you. Like I mentioned, it's probably a little bit more long-winded than some of the other ways I've done things. But, you know, people ask occasionally, hey, how would you do this complex thing? Well, there you go. You got to spend some time on it sometimes. <laughs> and I think if you're doing a, a British Airborne Army, the Paras in particular, they do really benefit from a little extra time spent on them. These are cracking miniatures. So feel free to drop a comment in the old box below. Uh, my Twitter and Facebook are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time. You guys enjoy the rest of your day.